Hello and welcome to another Office 365 Hours. My name is Christian Buckley. I'm the Brand Alliance Director here at AppPoint and a Microsoft MVP and Regional Director. And I am joined today by Vesa Nopanen, a Microsoft 365 Apps and Services MVP and Principal Consultant in Sulava. Good morning, Vesa. Good afternoon, uh, Seabuck, or good morning to you. <laughs> Wherever it is, I know. Yeah. Well, this is a great topic. I know that you're talking about, writing about this a lot, a few different things, but we're discussing the topic of Microsoft Loop and the future of work. Really interesting topic. I'm excited to get uh, to, to dig into this topic. Let's start things off. Let's jump right in. What is Microsoft Loop, and why has Microsoft created yet another tool or a canvas for creating content? Uh, thank you, Sipak. This is actually a very interesting topic, and I love the way that we are just dropping into the uh, straight into the content. Uh, Microsoft Loop is a new tool that is going to allow us to work both synchronously and asynchronously uh, over different canvases. So, so I think uh, it, it's uh, well. It's based on the fluid components that were announced some years ago, and, and uh, when Microsoft was showing them off, uh, demoing them at Build, uh, it, it was very clear that, that you can do things in real time with those fluid components. And Microsoft Loop is one implementation of those of these fluid components when it brings the power of collaboration or uh, con uh, simultaneous collaboration. Uh, to different canvases. So, for example, in Microsoft Teams and, and Outlook, uh, as they are in the moment. So, I think the importance there is that how it's going to answer these needs about how the work is changing and how we are going to be working together. Because we just can't be on these meetings all the time. We can't be there and, and be online and, and then make on those decisions. We need to have new ways how we are working at different time zones, different times asynchronously. And I think that's one of the, the driving forces why Microsoft was uh, creating the Microsoft Loop component or Loop. And then it's, they have big plans how they are going to be expanding that, how we are going to be working with ad hoc teams, for example. So first, when it was dropped in, it felt like, OK, we have yet another note taking or collaboration tool, but eventually when you have been starting to use that, you are going to start finding new ways uh, how you can use that, how you can make things better with that. So it's yeah, instead of like uh, colliding with the other tools, it's going to be uh, uh, completing them in, in several ways. Well, it's interesting that uh, so one, so much of collaboration is shifting towards the conversational, the chat based. And, and so this is I mean, it really goes back to the late 90s with the instant messaging protocols and tools, and it got more and more integrated into other enterprise applications to where we have now with like Microsoft Teams, you know, so much of what we do is, hey, if I need to pull yourself and uh, two other people into a conversation to work on a task together, I'll just spin up a chat. It may be part of a channel conversation, but I think myself, like many others, are finding you know more and more of these smaller chats, um, so not part of the channel, but just a private chat where it's not part of a formal project, but it's it's kind of the staging round. It's the lead up to the creation of a formal project, a, a formal team with channels, and so we want to flesh out some ideas or solve a smaller issue, and collaborate together. And Loop 
just seems to fit into with that model. Um, that of course, if I go and add yourself and two other people to a chat, to your point, you're like eight hours ahead of me. You know, you may not be online while that's happening, but I might start collaborating with a couple other people. I might forward that same com loop component via an email to someone and who's outside of that chat, but we'd be able to see their inputs directly within that chat. As soon as you're back online, we can collaborate in real time so that synchronous collaboration or asynchronous, depending on when people touch it. So that, that really seems to fit with just the way that collaboration seems to be evolving. Uh, exactly, because we are not always working on very well structured teams, but instead we are like freelancers. Uh, we, we are just uh, creating ad hoc the smaller teams and, and just like you explained, like, like uh, we don't have, a, uh, we have lots of people who are working from time to time and, and small groups and the ideation innovation process is exactly the part of that where the loop component is going to help us. We just gather up more people to get their opinions, ideas, and and, uh, and of course we can catch up asynchronously whenever we can. So, so we are not missing anything out and we still can progress things. Uh, I think it would be a very big mistake to think about, okay, now loop is taking over the world. Uh, no, it's not a document. It's about the canvas, just in, in a bit way like one note way where, where you have a very open canvas where you can put in your ideas and descriptions. Uh, of course, one note is more like a, like a very well formed collaboration tools. After all, it goes back for a very long time. While loop is made for this uh, very fast paced ideation and fast paced short live uh, needs. Like for example, when you are ideating the webinar or a presentation, and, and to explain, you said, yeah, uh, we could start up with a few guys or a few people creating a f first structure and you hook up with people through the Outlook. Okay, you can use, let's get uh, that person here because that person doesn't use Teams. But we can also say, okay, what about if we need somebody else here? So we can just drop into the other chat and they can work on the same content. So instead of copy pasting the information, and this is something we try to get rid of for over 20 years, like, like have that single source of truth. If you remember the Microsoft BI promise uh, back in 2000 or 19. Many, many some, products have made that promise. Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 that, so that's kind of the fun that loop is finally Beginning that we can just copy paste the loop link and, and paste it whenever we need input from other people. And I think one of the biggest things the loop already fixes is that we have used to have, well, we used to have those email conversations where some people were dropping one liners, two liners when you were forming up the agenda. We all had those and I, I didn't like them because it was very difficult to follow up. What's what's going on? Or in Teams chat, some people drop in ideas. Then you, somebody just uh, collects them all, creates a, hey, this could be the agenda, drops into the chat. Then somebody says, no, you are missing something. The loop component is fixing this. It's enabling everyone to make those changes instantly in the chat, in the flow of work, directly to the content. It's an important part of that too, is just that it, it, it's also, um, you know, get my background, uh, first half of my career as a project manager uh, is making sure that people feel that they've been heard as well. The other problem is that you, if you're collecting data in real time in conversations via emails, via chats, via other mm -hmm. documents, shared documents, is that some people may think it's like, hey, I suggested something. I don't see it on the agenda where you, the PM, that may have reviewed it and said, yeah, that's not relevant for this conversation. Here's the purpose. But when it's this collaborative and everybody can, it's like showing your work. Everyone can see it at the same time in real time coming from these different uh, uh, sources or these different silos or the, I guess workloads coming from today from teams within the chats, it can be a multiple chats uh, or you know, coming from Outlook. But the people feel heard. They know that their message got through to where the conversation is having and where the, 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 the happening where the collaboration is happening. Uh, exactly, and, and that's about the transparency. And, and we've had 
that drive for the transparent collaboration for whenever we had the uh, Microsoft Office online. So you were able to, or in the 2010, 2013 SharePoint, when you were able to collaborate on the same document at the same time. And, uh, but people were, were and still are afraid of that a bit. So I guess that's going to be a bit of those adoption parts that it's going to take time and people to understand what's the loop and why it is so important that, okay, we are doing that information. We are not copying that. We are doing it together and uh, we don't have to move the content from one place to another until basically it's ready. And then, then we put it to somewhere that can be stored. Well, there, that's an important point. There was a, a years ago, and I know that you know this, that uh, there was a solution that came out of Microsoft R&D called Gig Jam. Yeah. And one of the, and it was a, a future looking, it's like, uh, you know, so it, it was never meant to be a, a, a live product. I actually still have the app on my phone, which doesn't do anything, but uh, it's, it's fun to look at it, it's kind of a, a, a uh, you know, a, a jump in time there. But uh, the purpose of gig jam was to be able to let's say that you and I are working in a highly confidential project we can't share there's financial data there's all these things around there but we need input from another person that will impact our data and so what gig jam attempted to do was highlight aspects of this secure environment share out only what was needed for the feedback to these other external people bring them in collaborate on that and then remove them from that. So you never have to change permissions. You don't have to give people access to sensitive information, but they could collaborate on those aspects that they need. Loop fulfills some of that vision by, again, we can have a very, we can have a, a, this, a secure project, but very easily go spin up a chat, pull in the people that we need feed, feedback from, internal or external, depending on you know who you give access to. Um, collaborate on this, here's where we need feedback, collaborate in real time, and then close that, end the loop, close the loop, and mm -hmm. take the information and import that into that secure environment. So you're not harming any of the security permissions, but you're able to much more dynamically, much more easily go and collaborate with the people that you need to collaborate on. Yeah, on exactly. I remember the Geek Jam. It, it was a very interesting concept, and it came from the that the world is a network, that there's more and more freelancing. And, and that's exactly why I thought about the gig jam when the loop came out. It, I think we kind of touched that on our previous conversation. Yeah. Uh, so so it, it's a great way to see how ideas are evolving and developing into new ones. But I think uh, we are just talking about the loop as the kind of the collaboration platform, but it's much more. I uh, I think the other big thing in the loop is that it's enabling you to do things in the flow of work. Well, we know why it's Teams chat where it started, because we know how much people use Teams chat. They are not on channels where everything is transparent and so uh, But we are using the chats and we have to support, make the collaboration better there. So there's Microsoft loop. But to the same chat, you can use other kind of loop components because it's kind of framework there that you can create your own applications and expose them as loop components to the Teams chat, for example. The Dynamics 365 is going to be the first example where you can drop in, uh, for example, opportunity or uh, frontline worker work uh, kind of assignment there. So it's a Microsoft application that's going to be living in the chat. So you have the window to the real data. Very easy user interface, no need to kind of log in, no, no need for that because the security is already taken care of. And, and you are dropping in, changing things, and it's going to change the information in the source. And I think that's a very beautiful part of the loop components because that's really enables us to have a new kind of uh, applications available for users when they need them and and they are meant for a short leave task or, or into short leave short period of time and then they can use them and then they are closed uh, the loop is closed of course so you're kind of exposing these micro windows uh, to the applications or backend systems and and it's using the adaptive cards there so I, I think that's a really brilliant approach 
because we know how people are. They are not even open to the tab in the chat, even if you were able to put the application there, because then you would have to log in and you would have a much more richer interface. And it takes time to create that. But instead, if you are just focusing on those specific use cases that you enable for users, I think that's a real good thing. It's, it's part of the collaboration, but it's really working together in a very new ways. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. You, it, it's so true, though. It's like you can have you can have all the tools that we need to collaborate on our project together in tabs to other systems mm -hmm. and other things there, and that is still a barrier for people to go. And I mean, that's one of the strengths of Teams is having the tabs, having all of the tools centralized. It is that 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 hub of of teamwork. You know, as the tagline goes. And yet some people like struggle to find like I didn't find what I needed. It, you, well, you're looking in the chat. It's in a tab. It's right there. And loop even streamlines that and says, hey, what we need to collaborate. It's right there. We say flow of work. It's right there within the body of the chat. Yeah. And so we're collaborating right. You're not having to go to the other tab. If I want to get to the full access of all of the information, uh, you know, I can go to the tab and log in, uh, you know, and, and access that data. But what we're collaborating on, what we need to discuss, the data that we need to update is right there within the flow. Well, you've talked about kind of where some of the things that are coming up. So what mm. is what's coming with with Loop? I mean, where do we go from here? How much do we know about Microsoft's product roadmap? Um, I don't think I have seen much of the roadmap or the real roadmap for Microsoft Loop. But what we have, we have seen what they announced at the Ignite last year. So, so that's basically covering the information, okay, where it's going, where it's going to be available. But there are hints there, here and there. For example, the micro applications is coming and, and so, so you can drop them in and so, so you can start creating them and, and starting to experiment with that part and the dynamics part is coming. But I think the very, very interesting thing is that we are working with loop components now and eventually we should be getting loop pages where we are putting several loop components together. And, and those play, uh, pages will be created on the workspaces. That's a loop application. And, and that's the application part we don't know much. We, we know the intro video. And it's kind of overlays the scenario where you can create workspaces. OK, that's. That's the kind of the wrong foot approach when people were starting to think about Teams and SharePoint sites and everything like, okay, it's a totally different aspect because it's uh, allowing us to uh, work together in a very, very flexible way. And, and the ad hoc and, and the inter moment uh, things, what we are doing and, and getting people together, work on the same content that's going to be organized on the workspaces and then on the loop pages. But that's only a part of that. That's like uh, aggregating information, like the project, like the Geek Jam thing. OK, right. here's the information. We need your, uh, your help. Of course, we will be able to work with the external people there. Uh, currently, loop components are only working in, inside the company, but eventually they will open. We, we know that because that's the direction the world it's going and that's the direction it needs to go to be useful. And what else they kind of dropped in, of course, it's well, the application is itself. It's a big thing and it's going to be one of the confusing things for people because then it's going to be, hey, one note, word, loop application. What what way are you going to be using? We still have sticky notes too. And so, so there's so many tools and, and that's why it's going to need a lot of adoption uh, for the organization, training, learning, okay, the um, playbooks. This is how we are going to do this. This is the best use case for loops. These are the use cases for a one note and, and so on. But I think that that wasn't the last part I was really excited about the loop. I think the best part was that we can take the same content, the component or the page, probably we are talking about the component level, mm -hmm. and take it to different applications. So now we are talking about the Teams chat and Outlook. It's showing up a bit of that strength. But what was highlighted 
uh, into announcement was that you could have loop components in Word documents. You might have loop components in PowerPoints. So you have the same content that you can place into different applications. And yes, the whiteboard was there. And uh, so you could drop in the loop component to the whiteboard. And when you are working on the whiteboard, you could see other people changing the loop component data. It might be a table, it might be an Excel, it might be whatever it's in that component. And you can see things changing. And this is a very big connection to the metaverse for me, because hey, uh, especially if we are in the, uh, using the VR immersive headset, uh, metaverse part, we could see the whiteboard. We can see stuff happening on the whiteboard by people who are not there. It's a really connected experience. Oh, we are doing changes there. And the best part, it seems like the whiteboard itself, it's based on the fluid component today. So uh, in my vision, I hope it aligns with Microsoft vision, is that we can uh, drop in that whiteboard to Teams chat in one day, or we can drop it to Word, or we can drop it somewhere where people can start editing that. We saw that whiteboard somewhere in some of those examples dropped into different applications. So that's why I'm really hopeful. And uh, in Twitter, I asked from one of the whiteboard uh, uh, product team members about, OK, when do we get uh, the, the loop components in the whiteboard? And the answer was very simple. Stay tuned. So I'm really hopeful about well, that there, one. I was just thinking of, of scenarios of where uh, you know, when we have the speaking of, you know, a whiteboard, of course, uh, there's a lot of talk about that out in like uh, the education sector, this thinking of different scenarios and incorporating, uh, you know, in EDU um, loop components and whiteboard into a lot of that capability. If I am doing a presentation and you know, so many events now that are hybrid. And so the ability to do, uh, you know, forms and surveys and, and share loop components with people that are participating, whether in person or those that are online in a presentation. Um, I mean, it's just fantastic uh, for where things are going. And that's, you started to kind of get into this and start talking about like the future. So how is mm. the nature of how we're working as teams, as organizations changing? Because it's not just about loop. Uh, I mean, there's changes in the ways that we, we're thinking about content. I mean, you, you said when we're able to share components between different workloads, it's really going to change how we use Word and Excel and PowerPoint and, and kind of all those tools, as well as uh, you know, a lot of the power platform solutions that are out there where we're pulling data. So how are tools like these changing teams, not the product, but uh, organizations, how organizations work? Um, I think the big thing is about that you are go going through that flow in the flow of work context. You are getting that information to the specific point where you can edit that. You can utilize that information. So, for example, the word is a good example. We might have an executive summary there, and, and it's embedded in the uh, uh, word document. And somebody else is changing that. For, for example, they might have a uh, workshop going on and they are just updating the loop component during the workshop. So and anyone else who's what, uh, checking out that document can see the abstract or a summary forming up in front of their eyes. And, and I think that's, that's one of the key things instead of copy pasting information like going through a managed process, we are going to be uh, giving our input into different places and it's going to scale to different applications whenever it is being used. Of course, there are things about compliance and there's things about freezing the document and that it's not just a, hey, we can change anything afterwards. It's not that, it's not, it's not going to be the way. But when you are creating the content, when you are putting that information, we are going to be seeing that we can do it in so many places without opening the Word document or something else. For example, um, I think you know this as well as I do, and uh, hopefully, or perhaps many listeners, at least in the IT business, know that as well, that uh, if you have to work on a document and you drop into the link to OneNote, hey, OneNote to the chat or to the meeting chat, and uh, then uh, people are supposed to click the link, open the OneNote, and start putting their notes. How many does that? A few. 
if you drop in the memo directly to the chat where you can edit it and view it, uh, it's a lot lower threshold to start working on the content. Right. And, and we are going to be seeing this in meetings. We are going to be seeing the meeting agenda part. So we, well, we know about the meeting agendas or, or the lack of them <laughs> when you are getting the calendar invites. So, so in, instead of having the empty one, there's a, going to be a very easy one to put the agenda or anyone who's been invited can do that. So people can work together. And instead of having that one is doing and everybody is tell, else is telling that person what to do. So, so I think that that's going to be towards the true collaboration, very uh, asynchronous, synchronous collaboration there, because we can do it on different times and, and we just see the result. And, and that's going to be a very big thing about how teams are going to be working. We are working in different times. We are going to be working in different projects. We are having split time, so we are multitasking. And then we just drop in and do something about that when we can. And of course, when, since the loop components work also very nicely on mobile teams and, and, and a mobile office app, so, so you can just drop in and do that on the fly. Uh, wherever you are, on the airport or, or commuting, something like that. So, so we can see that hybrid work uh, coming there, and we can see loop components making hybrid work better. I would, I can't say enabling hybrid work, but it's just one of those components, hey, loop components, uh, sticking people into the loop and and making the things more and more possible to make it very easy for people to work together, and. And I think that's one of the key things, and that's the direction we are going. Different applications, but without having the need to open that application. For example, the metaverse example is one thing. We want to be able to input content to the metaverse, but we don't always want to be there, at least not in immersive one. Ever, anyone who's been trying to use the virtual keyboard knows that it's not fun, it's not fast. Uh, anyone else who is not native English speaker can try to, to, to uh, speak to the speech to text. Not that fun. It's not perfect. It works in Teams meetings, but it's not, it doesn't work in every place. So it's getting better. AI is getting better. But I, I really like the way we are going to be in a connected and disconnected at the same time. So that's that's kind of a very interesting part of the future work that, that's going to happen. No, that's that is a great point. That is, you know, you, I know we've used the, the phrase a lot of the, you know in the flow of work. But you think of that, especially in the metaverse ex example, having to log all the way in to get into the environment just to update something like is not very realistic. And so sometimes being able to share those things out. Think of that. Be able to create and initiate a loop component in the metaverse. Push it out to people that are not within the metaverse. Have them interact with push information, share information and collaborate while you're within that environment. So not having to go in uh, it, it, into that environment uh, will increase the input and the, the activity. Going back to one of the first points we made, like people struggle with going up and clicking on a tab to get into another interface to add information. And so the more that we can do to decrease the 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 friction of collaboration, make it easier, again, within that flow of work, just to insert the components where we want to interact, it's going to increase the level of engagement, increase the, the amount of collaboration. Exactly. So, so that, that's what we are going to be seeing. And I, I was just thinking about the example from today in a meeting when you are planning a customer meeting together with the team. and. Uh, so putting the loop component to the meeting in the meeting chat this time and then just typing the notes, putting the ideas is a very great way to engage people. And, and when they start realize, hey, they can edit those, they can see them. It, it's really fun, like, like seeing, OK, I don't have to be the single person doing that, but we can empower everyone in the team to do that really easily. And, and the easiness is the key thing, like instead of clicking links, opening different apps, 
Teams is a hub for work or hub for teamwork. I've expanded it to hub for work, and I really, really think Teams is the hub for work and with all the applications bringing the capabilities. But it also is going to be powering a lot of this collaboration uh, with loop components. Because as, as you can start seeing those adaptive cards or, or components more and more in chat channels everywhere, you, you know how you can use Viva Sales, for example. You can use other things. They are aiming towards the card in the chat. So the micro applications are, are there, so you can use them to be able to uh, stay up to date and then update the backends and whatever you need to do. There's so much going on, folks. If you are not uh, yet following along with what's happening with Microsoft Loop, you definitely want to pay attention because there's just a lot of innovation that's going to be coming. And as Basa says, that's cross workload um, with the adaptive cards and a lot of micro applications across the various workloads. There's a lot that's going to be coming uh, very soon. So make sure that you're paying attention to what's happening with my Microsoft's roadmap. Basa, really appreciate your time today. Uh, thanks again for joining uh, Office Hours. Thank you, Sebak. It was really fun and it's great talking with you because this is very energetic and then free form and, and still we have a lot of good content, I think. Yeah, I know next time we can probably benefit from a loop component of uh, putting the agenda and different topics. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. But the, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that another time. But yeah, let's stick in the loop. Yeah, of course. And for those, if you've not already done so, uh, be sure to register, subscribe for Office Hours to get all the notifications about upcoming shows, which come to you on the first and third Wednesday of every month, always at 11 a.m. Eastern. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.